Hi there Jeep owners, today on your 2019 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install a Roadmasters Dodd wiring kit. You can get this kit in a lot of different configurations depending on what kind of tow bar you've got and which one's going to work best with it. There's five main components you're going to need when flat towing your vehicle behind your motorhome. You're going to need your tow bar, your base plate, your diode wiring, your safety cables, and your supplemental braking system. We're gonna be showing off the one today that just uses a four pole flat connector, but we're actually gonna be cutting them those ends off and wiring it to a six way. Um, that's because our tow bar came with a six way connector, but you can get it in coiled cable, hybrid coiled, straight cable. Uh, so there's a lot of options, um, about four or five different options with a couple of different components, but all of them are gonna install exactly the same. So regardless of which kit you get, you can follow along with us. Diode wiring kit from Roadmaster is going to be one of the easiest ways to get all the lighting signals from your motorhome transferred to the back of your vehicle here so that way all the signals on your motorhome will be mimicked here at the back. This will ensure the people behind you will know your intentions when going down the road and it'll also keep you DOT compliant in most states. The diodes will interrupt the wiring that goes from our vehicle to the light here at the back and we're going to be interrupting both the tail and turn and stop signals so that way we can use our motor home to send those signals directly to the light so that way the same light here is operating as if we were driving around normally. The diodes act as a one-way check valve though so when we place those in line on our factory wiring here it allows the factory circuits to still function normally lighting up the lights and it allows our motor home signals to also go and function to light our lights but it cannot back feed past the diode so that way our signals from our motor home can't go back and damage any of the computer systems here on our vehicle keeps everything nice and protected and gives you a nice operation and look here at the back. There are some other options out there for lighting on the back of your flat toe setup, such as bulb and socket where you would physically drill a hole in your assembly here to add another bulb. I don't particularly like that kind of one because a lot of your modern vehicles don't have room inside for an incandescent bulb. And it, oftentimes you do uh, present the situation where you can have a leak inside your taillight assembly, which does fail safety inspection in some states, uh, can cause a lot of issues with your lighting functionality as well. So the other option you would have would be a magnetic light option where you can take these lights out that have magnetic bases, set them up on the roof or on the side wherever you have a magnetic surface you can attach to, and then you run your wire to the front. Those are great if you got a couple of different vehicles you do or maybe you move things for a living like flat toe stuff for a living and you transfer stuff, that's a great option. But if you're going to be using the same vehicle over and over, every time you want to flat tow, you got to get those things out, set them up on the roof, and run the wires to the front. It becomes quite the hassle. So with a diode wiring kit, we take a little bit more time on our initial installation to get it installed, but then our vehicle just looks factory and has a connector at the front that we're able to plug into and make all of our signals function with, you know, drastically reducing our setup time for our motorhome because all we got to do is plug in a cable. So if you want to follow along with us, we'll show you how to get those installed now. This is going to include both the left right, tail, and stop signals. We'll begin our installation here at the back of the vehicle. We're going to remove both the driver and passenger side taillight assemblies. To do this, we're going to remove the cover that's located here at the back. So our taillight right on the inside, you'll see right here on top, there's a small cover. Just use your flat bladed screwdriver to pop that up. Everything that we're doing on this side is going to be the same over on the other side. We'll now grab a 10 millimeter socket and there's a plastic nut down in there. It's actually a bolt, a plastic bolt. Go ahead and zip that right out of there and it'll just pull right out. Our assembly now should slide right out of here. It does get a little stiff right here so sometimes you got to tap it a little. There we go. We're kind of rocking it a little bit. Those little pegs there, they get stuck in there. So just kind of gently rock it, kind of tap on it a little. Nothing real hard and you should be able to get it to release. So now that we've got that removed, we can go ahead and slide out our release tab, disconnect our connectors here. We actually want to go take this little tab that you see there out real quick as well. Um, a trim panel tool works really well, but you could also use a flat bladed screwdriver or a pair of pliers to pop that out of there. We can disconnect it. It's pretty stiff on there. All right, these Jeeps, they get out in dirty environments and dirt gets in inside these connectors and it makes them really difficult to remove. So now that we've got that removed, we're gonna remove the other side the same way. 
So we've got both of our tail light assemblies removed now. The covering that you see over the wire there, we're going to need to get some of that back off of there so that way we can access the wiring. So we're going to take our razor knife here and very carefully trim this back. And it's, it's like a fabric adhesive tape. So this stuff is pretty, pretty good on here. It's actually really difficult to remove this stuff. So just take your time and go slow. Sometimes you get lucky, and after you go so far, it actually you can unpeel it, but a lot of times, yeah, we're not gonna be able to unpeel it. A lot of times you can't peel it off of there. You just gotta take your time and just slowly work it off of there. So we're gonna do this till we get back to maybe about here so we got enough wire to, uh, to work with to install our diodes. And that actually will probably be good enough right there. It'll give us plenty of length to access them. We're not going to take the wiring that comes in our kit. You can go ahead and cut off the four pole end. You're not going to need it back here. So now that we've got the end cut off there, we're going to feed it up behind our assembly here. If you look down in the hole, you can see straight down through to the ground. So you're just passing it through that opening. Let's see, there it is. And we're just going to pull it through. You can pull yourself some excess through there. That way it can't fall back down when you're trying to work with it and stuff. So now that we've got it pulled up here, we're going to snip back each one of our wires here. Just snip in between each of them. This will separate them from one another. And once you've kind of cut the ends there, they actually peel right off of one another, kind of like a, like a piece of cheese or whatever. All right, so now that we got it pulled back, the green wire, we're actually gonna route to the other side. So we're gonna pull back quite a bit more on that one because that one's gonna drop back down. We'll go ahead and drop it back down. See you green. All right, so that guy can hang out down there. Make sure we get it pulled all the way down. But over here on our driver's side, we are concerned with the yellow, the brown, and the white. So we're gonna strip back each and every one of these and we're gonna be attaching the spade terminals that come in our kit to it. So let's get them stripped back. Now the white wire is actually our ground wire, but you can get ground at any point here in your flat toe setup. So I, I typically use some of the white wire here that's in the kit as a jumper lead, because the brown wire that we're stripping back right now is for the taillight signal. We want our taillights to work on both the driver and the passenger side, so we need to get this brown wire also over to the other side. So what we'll do is we'll use a small portion of the white wire that we've got in our kit here as a jumper to do so. So after I got them stripped back, I grabbed the diodes out of the little package thing they were in. You're going to get a bunch of these blue spade terminals and you're only going to get one of the yellow. The yellow is special because it's the one we're going to use to attach the white and brown wire together to make our jumper. It's got, a, it's got a larger opening than the blue ones, so it'll accept two wires. So we're gonna take our white and our brown here, twist those two together, slide the yellow spade terminal on there, and crimp it down. We'll then take our yellow wire here this is going to get a blue spade terminal and all the rest of our circuits that we're going to be messing with back here. They're all going to be getting blue spade terminals from here. The, the one yellow we've already used. Just crimp that right on there. That's our stop turn for the driver's side over here. Now the wiring that we've got exposed here after peeling off some of the sheathing, you'll want to peel those back. And what you're looking for is the yellow wire and the white wire with the gray stripe. And there are actually two white wires with gray stripes on it in here. This one here is also white with the gray stripe. So is this one. If you look at them though, one is a thicker diameter than the other. So the skinny guy we're going to get rid of. We just want the two thicker wires. So now we've got both of those. We're going to cut these in half, strip each end back, and then each one of these ends will get a blue spade terminal. And we're not going to twist any of these wires together or anything like that. We're just twisting the end of it and then putting a blue spade terminal on it. Mm. 
And then our other sides are gonna get the spade terminals as well here. So the reason we cut the yellow and the white and the gray is because the yellow wire on our Jeep here is the stop turn signal for the driver's side here and the larger white with gray is our tail light signal. So we want to illuminate the same lights when we're plugged into our motor home so that way all the lights look just like they would be if we were driving our Jeep down the road. All right, this is our last one here. Get this one on there. And now we can plug our diodes in. The connector side here, we've got the two circuits near the connector. Those are always gonna be on the side labeled out because we're going out to our lights to light the bolt. So we'll plug that one into there. We're gonna plug the out into the other connector. And we're just gonna reconnect our wires. So we got the yellow on the out on this side. That means the yellow here, our fat other factory yellow, is just gonna plug to the in on the other side. Same with this guy here. We're just gonna be plugging this to the in on the other side. Now our wires that we routed up here, we can plug in as well. So we're gonna take the yellow wire, which is driver's side stop turn. Same as the yellow here on our Jeep, so it's nice that the colors match. Plug that wire in. And then our brown and our white is the tail light circuits. Those are gonna plug in over there as well. And now for our diodes, you can stick these kind of to some wall or surface, but due to the length of wire and stuff, there's really not a good location. So I typically just take these, stick them together, and then we can wrap a cable tie around this to hold kind of the whole assembly together. Just kind of poke your wire wires into like a little nook there. Put a cable tie around it. And then I also like to put another cable tie further up the wire here to hold our yellow brown, you know, the harness that we routed. It kind of holds it back out of the way and also ensures it's not like getting tugged or pulling on our wires there, kind of gives it a nice relief. You can trim off the excess, and then we need to route our wires over to the passenger side so we can do basically the same thing. So now when I go to route my wires over, we know the green wire has to go over to that side, but we had attached the white wire and the brown wire together so we can get our taillight signals jumpered over. So we've got the green wire that we had stripped back here, the rest of our wire kind of just hanging down there. I like to take the green, I'll hold it over, and I'll kind of hold it up. Looks like we're gonna be a little bit too short to make it in there. So we'll just peel back a little more green. Hold it over, hold it up. A little too short still, just a little bit more green. And that, that should be plenty of green wire to make it over to the other side behind our assembly. But we got our white wire that we need to get over there as well. And we only need the portion of the white that's connected there to jump over to there. So what I'll do is I'll take my green wire here and I'm just gonna fold it back down along my harness. Where the green wire ends, I will cut my white wire. And then after you cut it, a lot of times you just kind of pinch it like that. You can just peel it off. There we go. So now we're gonna take the white wire there where we cut it, and we're gonna peel it back until it meets our green wire up here. And now we have an equal length of green and white wire to route over to this side and up behind the tail light assembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and route my wires now. Then I will go ahead and make the connections over here and then I'll show you. It's gonna be basically the same. The only thing that's gonna be different is the wire color is gonna be slightly different on this side. So we're now over on the passenger side. We got our green and our white wire routed up. It's the same thing over here. You'll wanna strip back that sheathing. It's gonna be the same pin numbers, but the wire colors do change. For the stop turn circuit, you're gonna want the green wire on your factory harness there, cut that one. And for the tail light circuit, you want the white wire with the orange stripe. And just like the other side, there are two white wires with orange stripes. You can see there's another one. It's kind of a little bit more of a beige color on this side, but it is a thinner diameter. You want the thicker diameter one, just like over on the driver's side. Uh, so you can cut that one as well. You just strip them back. They all get blue spade terminals on this side and they plug in the same way. Connector side gets the out. 
and then the ends you get your wiring connected back in and then the wires we routed over. And then we can reinstall our tail light assemblies here once we get uh, all that hooked up. All right, so we're now underneath the vehicle. I'm gonna show you the way I routed all of the wiring. So our wires, they come down, of course, underneath our driver's side tail light. You can kind of see them here in this opening. We routed our white and green wire across so we could make our connections over, over here to the passenger side. So I did take out these two nuts. There's one here and here. They're using an 11 millimeter socket. You can remove those nuts. And then you can put the wiring on top of that heat shield to protect it from the exhaust there. So we did go back over to the driver's side here and you can see the green, white, I mean, sorry, the green, brown, and yellow wire where it's going forward. Those will continue going forward. So we stay up, we zip, we use the cable ties that come with it to connect it to the factory wiring. Make sure we go up above our suspension. We'd use another cable tie up there to attach it. And this is where our white wire kind of ended up. So we can make our ground connection right here. And we're probably gonna go right into this paneling here. Uh, it's a really good spot to go. Um, or you could even go to this paneling here because we can tell that this is a, a channel. So if we drill into it, it's not gonna expose the interior of the cab. So we're gonna go ahead and get our ring terminal attached. Stick your white wire, strip it back. You'll have a small ring terminal that comes included in your kit. We'll attach that to our white wire. And then we're gonna use the self-tapping screw that comes included in the kit to run it right into the paneling here. So we're just gonna grab that. I think in sideways will probably be the easiest way for us to go in. And then we're just gonna run it right on in. We'll use an eight millimeter socket to do so. Nice and secure, everything looks good there. So we're gonna continue then routing the rest of our wiring moving forward. So we just continue on, we actually poke it right into the frame. We're actually gonna stay inside the frame all the way forward. You can kind of see in this little opening there, you can see a little bit of it all the way up to the front. So just kind of keep poking it in the frame. Any of these holes that you see here on the inside or on the outside of the frame, you can use to kind of route the wire from hole to hole to hole until you get it all the way down. And you can see there on the outside where it comes out, we go on top of the frame here. And then on top of the frame, you're gonna have a, a wiring harness right here that we can attach it to. We just follow that harness going forward on top of the frame until it comes out here at the front. So it's kind of hard to see on top of the frame, but we do stay on top until it comes out here next to where our, uh, our radiator and condenser and stuff is. From there, we just use a cable tie to attach to the bracket that's located there. And we bring it over to the center. I've already went ahead and drilled out the hole, and we're just gonna bring our wiring through that hole where we're gonna mount our connector. Now our six-way connector here that we're gonna mount actually does not come with the kit that we're installing, but you can buy a kit that has a six-way connector with it. The reason why the customer didn't purchase the kit that has it is because his tow bar that he bought came with one of these connectors. So to save a little bit of money, not buying redundant parts, he bought a kit without the connector. But we'll show you how to hook it up because pretty much every time you're gonna run this up, you're gonna to hook to one of these, so we might as well. I did use a one and three-eighths inch hole saw to cut out the hole so my switch will fit in there. And I just, after I just kind of held it up there and then I used a quarter inch drill bit to drill out a couple of holes there so I can mount the hardware to it. But we don't want to mount it up just yet. We got to wire it up to our switch here. So we're going to grab our wiring and a few other things you're going to need here. I recommend a small Phillips screwdriver. You'll need your cutters here so we can trim it to length. You're going to need your strippers and some dielectric grease as well as electrical grease. So first thing we're gonna do is get rid of some of this excess. We got a ton of excess that we don't need here. I always like to leave some to make it easier to work with. So we'll probably leave about that amount there. So we'll trim this off here. And then you got some excess that you could use for uh, the rest of your flat toe setup or other things. Now that you got that trimmed, take the rubber boot. This just comes with the six way. It'll be on the back there. We want to slide it on now though, because it'll be difficult to put on later. And I'm actually just going to poke it right up behind the paneling there, that way it's out of our way. We can then take each one of these and just like in the back, snip in between them so we can separate each one. And 
And now that we've got each one separated, we're gonna strip each one. And with these ones, you do wanna keep it a little bit shorter than the wires in the back. All right, we got each one stripped. We're now gonna move on to our switch. I'll just bring it a little closer so we can more easily see the back side of it because there are labels on the back side. And I like to start with the one labeled GD. That's our ground. That's the white wire that we routed. So go ahead and unscrew that one so we can make our connection. And it's gonna rotate around. Next is LT, which is left turn. That's going to be our yellow wire. Next is RT, that's right turn, green wire. Next is S, we're gonna skip that one. That's for um, other accessories you may wanna add. Next is TM, that is for our taillight circuit. That's the brown wire we routed. And then the center one we're not gonna use either. That's often used for like a charge line kit. So we'll go ahead and hook these up. Each one of the wires just pokes in and then we just put the screw down. Make sure your screw's screwing into the wires, not the sheathing. So then we're just gonna poke them in and tighten them down, making sure to tighten on the wire, not the sheathing. And we're just going right around, doing it in the order that we just talked about there. So ground first, white, next is left turn. We know that's yellow. If you twist the ends of your wires, they slide in a little bit easier. And after that, it's gonna be our green and lastly, our brown. All right, all of our wires are now connected. We're gonna take some dielectric grease and put a thorough coating on the back side of it here. I'm also gonna push that rubber grommet back through right there. So we're gonna heavily coat this to protect it from moisture. and then bring our boot down, slide it over, and then I like to use electrical tape just to kind of seal it up, kind of help hold that dust boot in place there so it doesn't slide back and all our grease kind of falls out of there or anything like that. Just helps trap all that grease inside of there. And I'm gonna do this to both ends of our dust boot. You can then just push your connector on through and secure it with the hardware. Um, the hardware does not come included with it. The hardware typically comes included with your base plate, and that's what we're going to be using to attach ours. So now we've gone ahead and plugged in our tester box to our connector here at the front that's going to simulate a motorhome. If you're doing this at home, you can plug into your motorhome. You want to make sure that you have all your si turn signals and everything operating properly. So you want to make sure you have your left turn signal right turn signal, tail lamps, and brake lamps. And with all of our lighting signals working properly, we're ready to hook up to our motorhome and hit the road. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's diode wiring on our 2019 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited.